Good morning, everyone, and thank you all for joining us for It's Time for Change 12 Ministries. God bless you all, and I'm glad that you're here today. Well, the month of October, as we all know, is Pastors Appreciation Month. So with that being said, I want to thank all the pastors, all the ministers, all the deacons, all the deaconess, all those that are serving in the ministry in any capacity. Doesn't matter what you do or how you're doing it. Do it as unto the Lord. I am going to actually present the Word of God to you today. Um, since it's Pastor Appreciation Month, we're going to give Pastor Laz a day off and maybe a couple days off this month to rest and relax and recuperate himself and, I guess, gather some more information that he can share with you all and bring a fresh anointed word to you all, okay? So at this time, I'm going to take a minute to pray. You all join with me in prayer. Just because I'm standing up here live, I want you all to pray as well, okay? And have the Holy Ghost move through your house this morning. Pray like we never prayed before. You know, we're living in times that we need to pray without ceasing. Lord, we love you and we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, God. We thank you because you kept us another day that you rose up this morning, clothing our right mind, Lord God. We're thanking you today because you're still God and you're still performing miracles today, God. Lord, we ask right now that you will cleanse our hearts and our mind, Lord God, for any unrepentant sins we said or done, knowing, Lord God, or unknowingly. Lord, we ask for forgiveness. Lord, now that our hearts and our minds are cleared, Lord God, that we're going to welcome the word of God this morning. Lord, unstop our ears, open our hearts, tear up that fallow ground that we have, that your word may be planted in our hearts, that we'll be able to go out and reach a lost and dying world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, we're going to turn to the book of Job in just a minute, but I'm going to paraphrase something for you today, okay? I want to talk to you today about my case is different. If you've ever been to court, you know there's an attorney from both sides, and they bring a case to the judge or even to the jury. Those cases are brought to determine an innocent or guilt, or maybe they have a hang or hung jury. We don't know which way to go. But either way, every case is brought into a courtroom or into an atmosphere of being in judgment. There's nothing that's totally alike. Everybody case is different. So I want you to point to yourself today and say, my case is different. My case is different. When God called you to do something or do his work, he called you to do the work, not somebody else, because he knew that you were going to be different than those other persons. When we minister the gospel of Jesus Christ and we're doing what we are called to do for God, God gives us a special entity. He gives us a special gift. Every single person has a gift and every single person is a minister. Contrary to what you believe, you are a minister of the gospel. If you can open your mouth and encourage somebody or give somebody a word from God, you are a minister. When you walk around your friends or you're out in um, one of the local supermarkets or even out to eat and you feel that tugging in your heart or you feel like you need to speak to somebody or encourage somebody, that's what we call ministry. You don't have to have paperwork to say I'm a preacher. You don't have to have paperwork to say anything of that sort. We all are ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we take a look inside ourselves, we were built for this. We all are built to minister one to another. Whether it's family members, whether it's co-workers or whatever, we are built to minister one to another. Mind you, everybody has a ministry and everybody case is different. I took the liberty to look up um, the book of Job, Job um, 1, 13 through 22. If you don't know the story of Job, I'm giving you a brief synopsis. The enemy, Satan, the liar, the deceiver of the brethren, the one who's gotten kicked out of heaven, he wanted to take Job out. And the enemy said, you know what, Jesus? If you take the hedge that you have from around Job, how you're protecting him, I'm guaranteeing you Job will curse you and he will not even serve you anymore. He had to get permission. The enemy has to get permission to do anything to any of us. But God knew. He said, you know what? I'm going to take this hedge of protection around from around Job and, and watch we're going to see what's going to happen. Job lost his family. Job lost his wife. Job lost his cattle. Job lost his children. Job lost everything. Then, on top of that, Job became sick. Boils from the top of his head to the very sole of his feet. He had to get a piece of pottery to scrape his skin because he itched so bad. But what he didn't do, 
he didn't curse God. Job knew that his case was different. God knew that he was hand selected to do the work of God. He knew that Job, no matter what happened to him, that he was still going to serve God. Can we say that today? No matter what happens to me, if the hedge of protection of God is not around me, will we still serve God? You have to because we realize your case is different. If God chose Job to do that, he knew that Job had a different case. He knew that Job would stand firm on what he's done for him or for the word of God. Will you do that today? Will you continue to serve God even in these times of tribulation? Will you continue to say, God, you are my help, you are my strength. I trust you no matter what you take from, from me. The Lord give it and the Lord take it away. Job knew that. And guess what? In the end, Job had everything restored and then some because his case was different. We know no matter what comes our way, God is in control of every situation. We are bigger than what we think we are. We are set apart because God has called us to be set apart. We are not meant to fit in. Have you ever done a jigsaw puzzle? Or sat down and tried to put a puzzle together? We got all the pieces. And then we have two or three that are left out. We're trying to fit this piece in there and it keeps popping out. It's the reason it keeps popping out because you're not meant to fit in. That piece was not meant to fit in. Sometimes God have called you or called us to a point that we're never going to fit in. So if you're trying to fit into some type of group or some type of clique or some type of uh, whatever it is, you're not meant to be there when God calls you and separates you from the world because your case is different. Your case is procured. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation called apart. So when you're trying to fit in and you're not fitting in, you're not supposed to fit in because your case is different. Your case is different. So this week when we're going around, remind yourself, you know what? My case is different. We're never going to fit in. God has called us all to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everybody want to say, well, that's not my ministry. It is your ministry. I wasn't called to do that. It doesn't matter if you're called to do it. If you see your hands to do something for God, do it. If God has called you to do something, even if he hadn't called you to do something, you find that it's worth um, giving yourself Know that your case is different. If he called you, he's going to equip you. If he didn't call you and you're doing what you think is best and what God has called you to do, continue. God will lead and guide and direct you to where you need to be because everybody's case is different. Let's look at Jonah. Jonah in the book of Jonah 3. Jonah was called to go to Nineveh. Jonah's like, you know, not going. Well, the Lord said, yeah, you're going to go. You're going whether you want, want to go or not. Sometimes we want to do the will of God. Sometimes we want to be our own self and do it exactly what we want to do, but we can't. Jonah had the experience a three-day delay in the belly of the well. He sat there three days and three nights. Sounds like something we already know, Jesus Christ. But on that third day, that belly was erupted, and he threw Jonah up onto the sea, off to the sea, sure, and said, you know what? Jonah came to his senses and said, you know what? I'm going to do the will of God. No matter what it is, I don't like it. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to go. And in the end, God blessed Jonah for going to Nineveh. Do God have to take us into the belly of the well or take us to a place that we don't want to be because our case is different and we don't want to do what God called us to do? Let us not get to that point. Regardless, if, you, if it's delayed or you think I'm not going to, God will place you in a situation that you're going to do it. And in the end, it's not the benefit of God. It's for the benefit of you. You have something on the inside of you that God wants to bring out because your case is different. Jonah's case was different. He didn't know that. God wanted to use him for his glory alone. And Jonah finally went and so many people were saved. Even his enemies would say the whole city he didn't even like, but God wanted to use him in that situation. Sometimes we have people that we don't like that are in our life, whether it's family members, enemies, or whatever. But if God called you to minister to them, to take them a meal, to pay a bill for them, or financially bless them, or pray for them, what have you, you do that and watch God bless you because your case is different. We're not going to fit in. We're supposed to stand out, okay? So let's go on and look at the woman at the well. So this woman at the well, they never even gave her a name. They just called the woman at the well. Jesus and his disciples was on their way due north. And Jesus said, you know what? I must go through Samaria. He must go through Samaria. He knew at that time that there was a need. How many times have God told us to do something and we didn't do it? And, he, and you went all the way around the block, but you had to come back 
and go back that certain way. Jesus said, I must go through Samaria. So this woman at the well, this time of the day, nobody was at the well. No other women were at the well because she was ashamed. We all know what the woman did at the well. If you don't, you can find that in the book of John chapter four. Well, she waited around and waited around to make sure the other women weren't there. She pulled up her water out of the well and Jesus said, hey, honey, can I get some of that water? And she said, well, of course, she was doing a ministry and didn't even know it. Jesus said, you know what? You're not going to thirst ever again. As a matter of fact, when you serve me this water, I want you to go tell somebody else about who you serve. So you realize that, that her case was totally different. She was the first woman evangelist to go out and evangelize to a city. Go see a man that said this. She evangelized to her city and particularly to the men that she was probably with. Go see this man that I'm talking about that I went to this well and he had filled me because her case was different. How many of us is going to agree with us that that case was different? Let's look at Jesus, his mother, Mary. Mary was minding her own business, young teenage girl, and you know the angel of the Lord came to her. Hail Mary, you have been chosen highly favored of God. If I was a teenager and I'm thinking all this is coming to me, I'm thinking highly favored, yes, of God, but to be impregnated? Wow, that is something, but her case was different. She took on that burden and was carried into a place that she didn't want to go. Walking around pregnant, no shoes, no socks, or what have you, going into a manger in a dark place to have her baby, being talked about and ostracized by others. How many of us have felt that? But her case was different. And in the end, she bore Jesus Christ, the Savior of our sins, because her case was different. She knew that I had to go through this to get to it. It's okay if they're going to whisper. It's okay if they're going to talk. It's okay if they're going to say what they want to say, but your case is different. And when your case is different, your calamities sometimes are different, but you're going to come out on the other side. The anointing on your life is going to come out. The anointing and the oil in your life is going to come out because your case is different. Now, when you want to fit in, you might be a little bit comfortable, but when you're standing out, it's okay to stand out. It's not arrogancy by no means. It's not arrogancy. It's the anointing of God that he placed on your life to know to stand out and that your case is different. He chose you to do what he needs for us to do in this end time revival and this time and this hour. If you've been chosen and we all have been chosen to do the work of God, that you ought to be rejoicing right now. Who are, who is going to be able to live in the end times and have an end time revival? We should be rejoicing. We should be like, get on down. Amen. Jesus, you chose me for this hour. There's not a lot of people who made it to this hour. We are the end time revival with church you all it's time for us to rejoice in the lord and again rejoice be happy about it when situations come i'm made for this my case is different i've seen this before i'm going to speak to this storm in this mountain it shall be real because my case is different before i end today i want to talk about rahab rahab was a woman of the night for those children that are listening and adults you can explain that to them later but Rahab was used by Jesus Christ himself to hide the spies. Spies came into the city. They had nowhere to go. Rahab had that crimson stream of blood, that red, scarlet blood scarf hanging down from the red light district. And that's what saved the spies. Rahab didn't have to do that. Rahab had her life in danger, her family's life in danger. But Jesus said, you know what? Go ahead and do it. Rahab knew within herself that her case was different. She was made a promise. You know what? You hide the spies and I'm going to save your family. And guess what Jesus did? He did it just to like he saved her family. You have to know when God calls you to do something, it may be something extraordinary because he realizes that you're able to do that because your case is is different. Rahab knew that her case was different. No matter what the men said on the street, no matter what people said about her, yes, she had a job that was not appealing, but you know what? God used her for his glory alone. Her family was saved behind it. How many of us have been ostracized because of what we do or what has been said about us, but we continue on because we realize no matter what's said or done, that our case is different. No matter what people have said, our case is different. God has chosen 
chosen us for this hour and this time to move forward, to walk in rhythm and cadence in the Holy Ghost, to stand arm in arm, neck in neck with the enemy, and to pull down strongholds and realize that you are different. You're called out. You're sought out. Jesus has placed his anointing on your life. If you continue to walk in the unction of the Holy Ghost and you continue to do what God has called you to do and know that your case is different, there's nothing that can come against you. Hell or high water that you're going to continue to walk in the favor and the anointing of God. Don't forget that when God called you, he's going to anoint you and he has already equipped you for the hour and for this time. Continue in the way of the Lord. Continue to know that your case is different. If you're finding yourself in situations that you don't quite understand, remind yourself, you know what? My case is different. You cannot look to your sister or to your brother for answers right now. You're going to look to the hills from which come at their help because you're different. Your case is different. Everybody case is different. But in that case being different, know that God has a purpose and a plan for your life. Continue to do the work and the will of God as God will continue to anoint you and appoint you to speak into others' lives. Continue to work, oh God, in the ministry that he has called you into. I feel like I'm speaking to somebody today that you laid your ministry down because of what others have said. That you laid this down if you've come relaxed. Because of what others have said, you have just come lackadaisical or like the church of Laodicea, just want to be lazy about it. But God is saying today to pick up that ministry and pick up that calling because your case is different. I thank you all for joining us this morning and I appreciate you being here. I pray that on Tuesday, this Tuesday, that you will come back again for the motivational minute from Pastor Les. We are so grateful that you are even tuning in, even on those Tuesdays, that encourage us and we can encourage you. We can be found at it's time for change, um, dot com or dot org. Visit our website, www.itstimeforchange12.com or dot org. We love you. We appreciate you. Keep pushing, knowing that you are called for this hour and that your case is different. God, we love you and we thank you for those that joined in today, dear God, for this word, that it would encourage their soul, that it would stir up the gift that is in them, God, that they know that they are changed before you, Lord God, and their case is different, Lord God. I pray that you will lift them up, protect them, and keep them. In the name of Jesus, we pray in all things. Amen and amen. Be blessed. Your case is different.